I'm Dan Collins with Mercy Medical Center in Baltimore, Maryland, and you're watching Medoscopy. Thank you for joining us for today's procedure. Our guests are Drs. Lou Schoen and Rebecca Serrato, orthopedic surgeons with the Institute for Foot and Ankle Reconstruction at Mercy. One question I always like to ask physicians is how they got into medicine in the first place. Uh, you know, was this a field that you always had an interest in or were you thinking of taking another path? Honestly, I had a desire to be not just a physician, but a surgeon from an age of like eight. And it's very hard for me. Everybody has asked me, how did you come up with it so young? But I had such a interest in the idea of healing and interacting with people. Um, but then I also had, and I think it's the background, my, my, I come from a background of my dad was a plumber and all of my uncles were carpenters and we all grew up working with our hands. So it was a natural transition to want to be a surgeon as well. So it was really early, easy decision for me. Yeah, it's interesting because um, my grandfather was a plumber and my father was a dentist. And uh, so I grew up with both, uh, ex both being uh, areas that I was exposed to and uh, appreciated, uh, but certainly more even influential than their trades were the people that I got to meet in those associated trades and particularly my dad's friends who were doctors I thought were pretty cool. So at age five, I was kind of 50-50 medicine, dentistry, and by six, I kind of committed to medicine. And I always thought, of course, that I would be a pediatrician because that was the doctor that I knew the best. And I knew other pediatricians that were friends of my family. Uh, my father was a dentist. He did music and did lots of things. My mom was an uh, art teacher. And uh, so I always did crafts and music as well. And I always thought it would be kind of separate from my medical practice. And uh, as it turned out, you know, as I evolved into medicine, they kind of all came together. And when I discovered orthopedics, I realized that arts and crafts could be part of your career and could be actually part of medicine. So that was uh, the epiphany. Um, now, Dr. Schoen, I, I know you do a lot of work um, in terms of uh, research, looking at, you know, innovations in, in your field. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. I have uh, been very fortunate over the last uh, 31 years of practice to have uh, facilities to do research, either biomechanical research, anatomic research, or basic science research and biology. And uh, when you are looking deeper into problems, you also realize solutions. And so I've come up with um, many different products that are used either externally or internally for people. Uh, based on those problems that I appreciated at a different level. Uh, one of them that I'm particularly interested in is the total ankle replacement, which came to me after doing ankle transplants, which was a, a new thing that I was doing back almost uh, 25 years ago, and then realized that the parts that we were transplanting in were not really as durable as metal and plastic. And uh, I sat in the back while I watched the other inventors create ankles, but they didn't make any sense based on my science and physiology about the ankle. So I said, well, why not just take what you know from the transplant that you like and make it into a metal and plastic design? And, um, and that's where I created and co-created the Zimmer Total Ankle with uh, several former fellows and a biomechanical engineer and some other doctors that uh, came to fruition about uh, nine years ago. So that's one of my key interests. I've done about 500 total ankles. And worldwide, we've done you know, maybe 6,000 of the uh, Zimmer total ankles. So it's a lot of fun to look at it, innovate, and um, teach it better for more complex deformities. Dr. Serrato, I know you've been involved in a variety of um, clinical studies, trials, looking at minimally invasive procedures. What are you working on right now? Yeah, it's interesting. When I started in practice here about 14 years ago, um, you know, that is sort of my natural inclination and, and my partners can speak on that. From the beginning, I was always interested in, at that time it was arthroscopic techniques. So the smaller the incision, uh, the less dissection, the less trauma to that patient's 
um, you know, foot and ankle. I, that was always where my comfort zone was. And I always like to push the envelope with that. And probably about five years ago, um, it became, you know, more widely performed here in the U.S., the percutaneous techniques of minimally invasive foot surgery. And that's really been where I've been focusing uh, over these last five years, um, research. So really kind of understanding the techniques, improving the techniques, and really studying the outcomes on it um, so that we can train surgeons, not just locally here, but um, myself and some of my early adopters are um, educators around the world for uh, MIS techniques around the foot and ankle. And particularly like the, the bunionectomy? Uh... Yes, yeah, so um, there's multiple approaches to a bunionectomy, just like there's multiple open techniques. Um, and I always say it's not a technology that's fit um, a old technique. This is technology that's taking the principles of bunion correction surgery. Uh, and we're just able to um, perform these techniques through those small incisions. So there's multiple ways that we go about correcting it. And it's really just, you know, again, applying the principles to it and learning the technique, which is probably the biggest learning curve for most surgeons. It's a very different style of operating. Um, but I think, you know, it's certainly um, the interest in it, particularly in the North American um, uh, countries, Canada and U.S. has taken off exponentially in the last four to five years because people clearly see the benefits to performing that technique over some of our standard open. So basically, uh, ultimately, less is more, you know, for a surgeon. Yes, the less, less is to, better. Yes, the, the, the less you have to cut, the better off you are particularly with bunion correction surgery, it has a reputation, you know, amongst patients, not even around, you know, in the medical community, but just people, that it's a, you know, very difficult surgery to recover from. You want to try to avoid it at all possible. And so as this technique started, you know, becoming more readily available and, you know, the, the public um, heard about this, the interest in it was great for them because they don't, you know, they're suffering from it, but at the same point, they want to try to recover from something without all of the drawbacks of what happens with foot surgery. You know, the technique's been around for a while, but it, it, it didn't really take off until people like Becky took over and innovated the techniques with better technology and helped even expand the technology. And uh, it's a tribute to her uh, perseverance and her vision and her skills that so many other people are doing it. I mean, she's been responsible partially for the growth of it in this country, even in the world. So, I mean, it's, it's, it didn't just happen just like that. There was a lot of effort and, and really careful uh, uh, design and, and meaningful teaching events that could enhance this uh, technique as a safe experience for patients. We'll take a break and return after these messages. My name is Rebecca Serrato. I'm one of the orthopedic foot and ankle surgeons here at the Institute of Foot and Ankle Reconstruction at Mercy. Some of the most common conditions that we treat are forefoot deformities, such as bunions, arthritis conditions, including the ankle, uh, arthritis in joints in the foot. We treat a lot of sports injuries, ankle sprains, a lot of cartilage type injuries. Well, I think that's the greatest part about our institute. We have cutting edge technologies that we do on advanced deformities and problems, but we don't lose sight of the common things like flat foot, bunions. We cover the entire spectrum of foot and ankle care. We cover all age ranges and all types of pathology with multiple experts all under one roof. Uh, we really feel comfortable taking care of everything. Everything is about the patient when you come to the Institute. From check-in, to seeing the patients, to x-rays, to getting signed up for surgery, it's all centered around the patient and their experience with us. You look at people holistically, uh, you understand them better, and your treatments can be more customized to what their desires and activities are. We also rely heavily on other areas within Mercy and in other uh, departments, physical therapy, radiology, uh, pain management, things like that. So we really work very closely in an interconnected way with all of these facets to take care of the patient. When you see me as a patient, I will understand what your vision is about your problem. It's a more co-creative approach to getting people better pain relief, function, and health.
And welcome back to our next segment of Medoscopy. Well, now that we've got the clinical stuff out of the way, Dr. Show, your father was a singing dentist and your mother a visual artist. How do you perceive their influence over you, your interest in music, per se? Well, definitely, uh, I enjoyed that when I was not in classes. I enjoyed music and art. I took uh, music lessons from uh, very early on, uh, piano, then trumpet, trombone. And uh, my dad was a great singer. I, I could get by, but his singing was really uh, fabulous. And my mom was a, a fantastic visual artist. She, she was uh, also a great teacher. They both taught, she was a teacher, and he taught dentistry. Um, he also taught music and uh, would um, you know, take those skills that he learned from teaching others and apply them to um, me and my sisters. We all do some art and we all do music in, in my family. And um, so that was always, again, my recreation or my hobby. It was definitely a passion, but it was separate. But as I evolved into medicine, I realized the two could come together in orthopedics with arts and crafts and being able to uh, present things to other people, the teaching experience that my parents both brought to me, how they taught people became a way I taught people and using um, animations that I make or um, you know, funny sequences of slides, uh, human animation or drawing sketches, that could be helpful for teaching. So I incorporate that into my, uh, my lectures. Hmm. Now you're married, you have five sons. Are they all musically inclined? Uh, yeah, so we have on both sides uh, good musical genes. My, uh, my wife's uh, family, she has uh, three sisters. They're all musical. Her mom is musical. And um, she's a teacher as well, my wife. So she's teacher and, and musical. And so the, the, the experience that I had growing up was similar to what I think we gave to our kids. So uh, they were all... Uh, in touch with music and art, as well as their academics. And um, as a result, they all do some uh, of, of both. Um, my oldest son is a rock and roll star. How's that? Yes. <laughs> well, that's a job, you know. And he's a, a lead guitarist for Pigeons Playing Ping Pong. They tour the country. And he's uh, uh, a, a fun and exceptional musician, if I could say so myself. He doesn't do much in the field of medicine, though, but he, he appreciates it. Uh, the second one is a pen designer. He's an engineer, and he's in Philadelphia, and he has a company called Schoen Design. Schoen Design is a, um, a basically a, a small craft shop where he lays out of different metals all different pens, fountain pens, ballpoint pens, different shapes, different facets, and... Uh, that's what he does. So it's very much a craft engineering um, experience, much like um, uh, my, maybe my grandfather did with plumbing or my wife's father was an engineer and he did a lot of mechanical things as well. So that's son number two. Number three is an IT guy who, who lives in DC and he is the answer to everybody's prayer that their children should be able to help them and he always helps all of us and he's really an uh, exceptional person. The next one is a real estate guy in D.C., uh, working for a large uh, uh, national, international company. And then the uh, fifth one is a physical medicine and rehabilitation resident at uh, Mass General in Boston. So, uh, and, and everybody does something with music and something with crafts. And um, so I think my wife and I had, had pretty good influences. I think the number one thing is that we are both, my wife and I are both very passionate passionate about what we do. Uh, our work and our play are both filled with passion. And, and I think that perhaps uh, translated the best to the kids and, and inspired them to be passionate about the things they love.